So as you can see, all we're doing is working with the old, uh, not even sure what it's called, shore form, maybe? Basically a cheese grater. Picking out the high point, which was the bulge in the bonnet. And then trying to follow that back all the way over to the wing. And as long as I can get a nice flat line all the way across there, both sides, then that'll be a good start, a uh, good place to start putting the glass down. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape already. And we've also chopped the front off. So we've measured our center line, measured it from corner to corner. And then I've literally just come in here with a bow saw and just shut, um, chop that front edge off. Just to start getting that shape down along the wings here. And again, obviously we're gonna to need to get more foam in here. I'll have to stand it up so this is facing upwards. I'll get some more foam in here. That'll follow there back to the arch. Same thing up here. And hopefully that will all just slide forward as one. And then once that's all got the shape to it, we're then gonna start designing a hood scoop to go in here. That'll run back. And on the underside of that hood scoop, it'll have a, a little tunnel which goes back to feed the carbs, which will sit over there somewhere. But between now and then, obviously we've got a lot more um, planing, shaving, sanding to do, whatever you want to call it. Just trying to get this all nice and flat. And whilst the foam gives you a very rough finish, obviously when we get our first layer of glass mat on that, that'll be nice and flat. It doesn't matter if there's going to be air pockets underneath the glass, because we're obviously going to build up from that. It doesn't matter what's underneath the glass, it matters what's on top of it, because that's the side we take the mould from. So anything underneath it is irrelevant. We're just using the foam to get the rough shape first of all, and then we get a layer of glass on, and then I can see it um, in its entirety. It's very difficult to um, see whether something's a good shape or not, while it's different textures and different colours. You know what it's like if you've ever sprayed something, if you've got lots of different colours on the body work, you're sanding it back, you can't see the wood for the trees. Until you get a layer of primer on it and it's all one colour, then all of a sudden you can see where any high and low spots are. Um, so up until then, it's just trial and error really, and that's all we're doing. We're just gonna keep filing this back until we're happy with the shape. Then we'll get our first layer of glass on, and at that point, that's when we'll, we'll be able to see what it's gonna look like. But for now, just keep shaving. More sanding. Starting to get something like it. Slightly tapers off towards the front. And then I've done an amazing mock-up at the front using sanding discs to get an idea of where the lights are going to go and, what's it, what, and the size of the grill opening. And we've just drawn it on there with a marker pen, altered it slightly. I don't want to make it too wide. One of my big things was not making it too wide this way. I wanted to keep it nice and narrow, um, and that's what I've tried to do. Obviously, we haven't done any of the bottom part yet, that's going to be built down, there's going to be a bumper along that, and there's going to be a little um, front splitter underneath that as well. So I haven't done anything below that yet. That's the next job. Um, obviously, I can't make foam stick upside down, so I've got to turn it the other way around. Um, but just as a quick mock-up of how it's going to look, that is something like it. At some point, I've got to stop working with foam and get some fiberglass on it. Because um, like I said before, when you're working with foam, it's all aerated holes in it. You can't really see what you're doing. You can get it as flat as you, you know, as you can, but you need to get a, a decent hard substrate on there, like fiberglass, so that you can um, get a single colour on it and then have a look and see where all your highs and lows are and start to work off that. So that'll be the next job. Now we've got the rough shape. I've measured it side to side, front to back, etc. It's square, you know, the, the shape's right, minus a little bit of tickling. So the next job for us is then going to be get a layer of fiberglass over the top. We're going to get the flat edge of that bonnet glassed in first of all, down to here. And then once that's done, I will then raise the whole thing up and we'll start to do the bottom part of that 
um, grill, build that in in foam so I can work on the bumper and the front splitter. And then when we mold it, we'll mold it all as one. And it will sit on the car, I'm hoping, all as one. They aren't going to be three separate pieces, the bonnet, the bumper, and then the splitter, or the valance, whatever you want to call it, at the front. They're hopefully going to be all one piece. So when the bonnet pivots upwards, all the parts are going to pivot with it. Obviously, until I get it on the car, it's always going to be a bit up in the air. I don't know how it's going to fit. I don't know what it's going to foul on, interact with. I don't know. And I'm not really going to know that until we get near the end and I've actually got the, the, you know, the bonnet in my hand and we're trying to put it on and make it all work. So I'm expecting a bit of, you know, a bit of fun with that, but pff, what are you going to do? If needs be, I'll cut the bottom valance and the bumper off, permanently attach those to the car where the light pods sit now and just have it so the bonnet pivots if I have to. But if I can get away with having the whole thing in one piece, just with some nice lines in to make it look like the three separate pieces... I'll do that. Um, uh, yes, that's pretty much it now. So next job, get some glass on and um, start to move away from hacking foam apart. It's been, well, I mean, you know, it's messy. It's dirty. Foam doesn't cut very well. It always wants to grab and pull and rip bits off. And it's a pain in the ass. But we're getting past, almost past the foam stage now anyway, and I can start to build up with a different medium, so I'll shut up and get on with it. It's a frosty morning. But last night we did manage to get a layer of fiberglass down on the first part, just before I went home. That's come back this morning, that's gone off, and I've just given it a quick sand just to see how bad it is. Now, obviously, I put fiberglass straight on top of expanding foam. It's not going to be amazingly flat, as you can see. You can see all the light areas which have been sanded, and the dark areas which haven't, which means that's low and that's high. But overall, if you stand back and look at the profile, it's actually pretty good. So surprisingly flat for a um, bit of expanding foam and some fiberglass. So that's had one layer on top. So what we can then do is come in here with some filler. We'll give this whole thing a complete skim over with filler just to fill it, obviously, all the layer areas. Then we'll come in, we'll sand it back again, and we'll start to work the shape into it. Now I do still need to make the scoop in the middle. Um, I need to try and get hold of a bit of um, foam for that, which I don't have at this moment. But that's probably going to go from about here to about here. It's going to be quite, um, not very tall, a couple inches tall. And then it's going to fade back into the old bulge there, the GT6 bulge. Um, and I need to come in and finish the bottom edge of this. I need to sort of stand this up and work on the bottom edge because I need to work out where the bumper is going to go, where the front splitter is going to go, and also the gap for the number plate in the front. Um, and a bit more remedial work on the bottom corner of that wing. But overall, the shape here now is pretty good. It's pretty much where I want it to be. So, uh, yeah, more fiberglassing, more filling. All right, another day, another dollar. The work doesn't stop. It's still bloody cold though, everything's frozen, look. Bloody ice everywhere. I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm just not doing it. But, we did manage to get another layer of glass on. A couple of days ago before I left. So now we've got all the bonnet up to the edge there, done in. Down the wings as well. Dogs in the house get mental, so I won't let them out. Again, it's, you know, these bits on the wings are super lumpy. You can see this big dent here because I had a big hole in the foam. But <clears throat> the fact is, it's easier to get a hard layer on, skim over that with filler, than it is to keep messing around, squirting foam and covering it back. It, it's just much easier this way. So we've got a layer of resin on. She's good. We've just come over the tip here. And then we can start to sculpt our um, our grill out, which is today's job. I'm going to get in here with a knife, see if I can go around this, carve it out, and then start to scoop it out 
And I'm guessing we're going to go back in maybe, I don't know, three or four inches. I don't want the grill to be level. I want it to be nicely recessed because I think it just looks better. And, dun, 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 what's this? It's a nice bit of king span. The chap next door is a builder. And whenever I go up into the house to get a cup of tea, I look over the hedge and I can see he's got a big stack of unused Kingsman. I just finished doing some, um, basically rebuilding the uh, their house next door. And he's got this big stack of offcuts. And I keep meaning to, but I don't really know him that well, but I keep meaning to bump into him. I just pulled up today and he was getting to his car and I went, oh, sorry. I hate to be a scrounge, but I know it's expensive, but have you got an offcut line around you're gonna bin? He was like, yeah, take your pick. So we've got a nice piece here. That's probably about two and a bit meters long, wherever that width is on there. So about three inches. So that should be good enough to stick on the bottom here. I'll profile this off a little bit flatter. So again, I've just gone down it with a bow saw. This is what I've been using to sculpt most of it. <laughs> Ghetto style. Stick it on the bottom, that will be enough to actually start to then form our bumper. Our bumper is going to sit ever so slightly proud, it's going to come back and then sort of fade into the wing, and then we're going to have our sort of front valance, the splitter if you like, which is going to go on the bottom, which is going to be slightly scooped, not too much. Like I keep saying, it's got to be in fitting with the car. There's no point me making something like super modern, like a skirt that goes right down to the bottom and it's got loads of like flutes and it's all cool looking, because it's going on to a 70s car. So in the back of my mind all the time is, whatever you're doing, it's got to look cool, yeah, but it's also got to be in keeping with the rest of the car. I don't want it to look like I've just made a fiberglass bonnet and stuck it on the car. I want it to look like it's as close to original as possible. Like if it drives by, it doesn't like someone's, you know. You know like when you used to see cars back in the 90s, or at least in the UK, everyone went through a phase of putting these body kits on their cars. And they just, you know, speed screw them onto the sills and it'd be these huge skirts and balances. And, you know, all the boy racers thought they looked amazing, but they just looked dreadful. They look really bad. So we don't want to do that. We want to try and keep it looking period correct, but nice. Ultimately, I'm not going to know until it's on the car. And that's the, that is the worst thing about this whole build. I don't have the car here. My car is still at home with the bonnet on it. It's not until I've literally finished the entire process that I'm going to know whether it looks good or not. But what are you going to do? Right, started excavating some of the foam. All we're doing is come along here with the old knife, slicing it down, getting in behind and then just picking it out in sections by hand and we'll just get a rough depth as we go along and then we'll come back afterwards and we can clean it all up and do the edges and make all that nice i've already gone around the edges and just made a nice cut so it should break cleanly away it's gonna be a bit messy but you know mm. Looks like yummy cheese. Mm. Yep. There we go. Half hour with the old uh, knife. Obviously, you can see the old edge of the bonnet there. So, in terms of overall length, it's not going to be any longer than the original bonnet. Because you've got the bonnet on mine on the 1500, obviously you've got the chrome bumper which comes out to about here. My bumper is probably not going to come out that far, so it may even be shorter than the original. Which will be nice. How the overriders are going to interact underneath here with the lifting mechanism, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that's going to work out yet. Um, yeah, I don't know how it's going to work out. Well that is the overall shape chiselled in. I think it looks alright. So we'll come in here with the DA and flatten this all out. I'm probably going to have to trim this off. Well, I am going to have to trim this off because that's protruding too far. I don't, obviously, I've only gone back in like a couple inches to an inch at the moment. So 
not much. So I'm going to have to go back in a bit further than that, I think. Um, I haven't quite worked out that out yet. Obviously, I don't want the grill to be flush. I do want it to be recessed. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to take some more of that out. And I'm going to have to chop that off because we can't have that, can we? But I'm bored of that now. So I might actually start designing the scoop. Mm. Rough idea of the profile, how it's going to look. It'll do. Okay, last little bit for today. Obviously, we're just getting started on the hood scoop as well. And again, we're just eyeballing it. I'm not working off any set dimensions or existing measurements of hood scoops or anything else. I'm just looking at it seeing what I think looks about right for the size of the car and then just sort of going with it and working it until I'm happy with it. That's basically it. So it's going to be a bit lower. We're not going to have it quite that high. It's going to come down a little bit more. Obviously the opening is going to mirror essentially the opening in the grill. It's going to be nicely rounded off and then it's going to fade back in. So by the time it gets to the end piece here, it's going to be back down to the fiberglass level. So it's going to follow through there and then come down like that. Um, it'll probably stay a similar width all the way back. I don't think I'm going to bring it in narrowing as it goes back. I think that'll look a bit weird. So I'm going to keep it the similar sort of width all the way back. Obviously nicely chamfer these edges down so it's nice and smooth and round. And all that good stuff. Uh, and then obviously that can all be glassed over to become part of the main um, main body. And then when we come to do the skim fill and all the rest of it, we can then do that at the same time. Obviously, there's no point in doing all the skim fill, making it nice and flat and leaving this bit out because you've just wasted your time on that bit. If you're going to stick this on top of it, what was the point in going underneath and doing all the, you know, there is no point. So we may as well get that on. In fact, I should have got that on really before I glassed the bonnet because, again, the glass underneath this is essentially wasted. But there we go. doesn't matter. As you can see, we've just stuck a load of spray foam underneath it, slapped it down on top. Let it do its thing, and then we'll come back, trim all that off in the same way we've done the rest of it. Um, and as I said before, the idea is to have the hood scoop functional. So what I mean by that is um, it will have a small mesh grill in the front. It will be a hollow chamber going back through the bonnet. Um, and then on the underside of the bonnet, I'm going to sculpt another fiberglass piece, which will essentially be a tunnel that mirrors this one on top and then comes around and swings around to this side because obviously uh, in uh, my car, this is where the carbs are. I think they're this side. Mm, maybe the other side, can't remember. One on the sides, so I'll have a look. And then that can come across and then turn 90 degrees. It'll be a nice flat, it won't be like a big deep thing. It'll just be a nice flat um, tube that goes through so you have some kind of fresh air, you know fresh air for the engine which they like rather than that horrible looking cassette thing they used to have with the two hoses going towards the front no. it's another day as you can tell i'm having to do this over lots and lots of days i typically do half hour in the morning before i start work and then half hour before i finish work before i go home so it's just a little bit each day um but we've got a bit more done dun, dun, dun. So we've got our first layer of glass on our scoop. I appreciate I didn't um, get any footage of the, you know, shaping it, but you know how it's like when you're trying to um, film and work at the same time. Obviously it's a very basic shape, but um, yeah, I think it will look in keeping with the car. So we will get some nice bit of a mesh to go in behind there. And also we've started to take out more of the grill as well. Um, I want this thing to, I'm going to have to take out even more yet. So I want this thing to sit back a good sort of three or four inches. Um, yeah, I think part of getting the look right for this car is going to be getting this grill recessed enough. I don't want it sat almost near the front. I want it to be a decent um, amount back, three or four inches. 
So that's had two carvings. I'm going to have another carving. And you can see there, unfortunately, we've had to cut through the uh, GT6 bonnet. Bits of it on the floor. Sacrilege, I know, but, you know, I'm never going to use it. So carve a bit more of that back. And then, what, then once that's done, what we'll then do is we'll make an infill panel to go in here, which will be glassed. That will then go in there nice and flat so that we don't have to spend any time trying to smooth this out before we glass it. We can just put a flat infill panel in there. Once that's done, I'll then take a splash mold of that with the infill panel in, pop that out, and then this will be my mold for actually making the grill itself. Because the grill, if I show you my uh, little cardboard piece I've cut out here, this is a rough template for the grill. Hard to hold it in with one hand, but you get the idea. So it needs to go back a bit further because I'm not happy with that. That's about two inches back and I want it to be at least three. So we'll take this one out. We'll lay this one on the floor flat. We'll get a layer of glass over this so it becomes flat and rigid. That can then go back in there. Save me messing around with all that foam, trying to get it all nice and flat. That'll all get um, fiberglassed in. And then, like I say, we'll then take a splash of that, pull that out. Then once I've got a nice flat splash panel, I can then get um, some detail parts so I can start to cut holes where the lights are going to go. Probably a pair of lights on either side, so one here, one here. The actual vertical fins for the grill, I'll get some plastic moulding or something, glue them onto the fibreglass. And once I've got that piece all moulded in nice how I like it, I can then obviously take a mould of that, which will then allow me to pop a fresh one out of the mould, if that all makes sense. I appreciate that's a lot of me saying, take a splash, mould it, put some glass on it, mould it, pop it out, and something won't be going, what the fuck is he talking about? But, you know, you get the idea. The actual grill, the piece that the lights are going to be mounted into, um, I was originally going to get it laser cut in aluminium, um, and that will then just get bolted in. So all the lights, a bit like if you're making a dash panel, for example, all your lights will get bolted into the actual um, grill panel. And then once it's all assembled, you can then bolt it in as the very last thing you do. It will offer up to the front, screw it in from the back, plug all your wires in for your lights, and it should be good to go. Um, but again, the problem is if I get it done in aluminium is that it will just be a flat piece of alum aluminium with no detail. I'll then have to stick the detail onto it. So instead of doing it in aluminium, I may as well do it in glass, add all the detail into the glass, so when I pop it out of the mould, it's got all the detail already in it. And then if I want to put some chrome trim over it or something like that, it's much easier to do. So that's the next job. Get that cut out more, make the dash in, fill panels, and then I can get on to making the bumper and making the front valance. But I'm trying to work my way down as I go. Um, and again, we've got some nice hard glass on all of this now. So that's nice and um, nice and secure, basically. Because this Kingspan stuff is lovely to work with. It is so soft. You can carve it with any grade of sandpaper, even like a 150 sandpaper, and it comes out absolutely silky smooth. It really is a joy to work with, but it's incredibly soft. You can literally just poke your fingernail into it. So if I don't get a layer of glass on it, I know what I'm like. I'll come here and I'll put a tool on top of it, drop an angle grinder on there, and then I'll have a big dent in it. So it makes sense to me to get a hard shell on all the parts I've done so far, and then afterwards I can come in here, sand it all flat, get my filler in there, and start to sculpt it and make it look all nice and groovy. We got doors on the workshop. It's still bloody freezing. Okay, as you can see, today we have got the infill panel done. So our cardboard template that we used earlier, took that off, laid it flat, covered it in glass and resin, so it's nice and flat and rigid, put it back in. I've ground down a bit further now, we've gone in an extra inch, so it's now three inches in there. You can see pretty much a finger length, straight in because the eventual panel is going to sit probably two or three mil forward, and I think that's going to be about right. As always, we're just eyeballing it. We've also glassed the edges. So here, over the panel's glass, the underside up here is glass, and it comes around here. So that entire front now, apart from here down, is all now, now nice and rigid. Uh, 
and you can definitely see what it's going to be, if you know what I mean. There's no sort of, you know, no guessing of the look I'm going for now. Before, when it's all just foam, it looks a little bit weird. But I think now it's definitely starting to get that classic muscle car shape. I think. Some people might disagree. It's fine. It's my car. First. You don't have to like it. Um... It's going to take a bit of grinding and a bit of shaping to get it all to sort of sit right. You know, I appreciate that. But eventually I'll have a separate mould of that panel. So in case I make a terrible mistake, put the lights in the wrong place. I don't like the way the grill looks or whatever. It's not a problem. I'm going to start from scratch. I can just pop another one out of the mould and go in again. And then I suppose then the next thing to do is to start working down. We're going to have sort of a um, three, four inch bumper that goes along here. It's going to sit about an inch out from that go around and fade into the wings. And that bumper is going to have a recessed section in the middle, 50 mil all the way around, a slight groove if you like, and we'll get a 50 mil chrome um, trim strip, sticky back 3M strip that's going to sit in on that bumper. So the bumper itself is going to be black, but it will have a nice thick chrome strip that goes all the way around it. And I think that'll tie in quite nicely with the rest of the car. As I've said before, everything I do on this has to look right front to back. It's no good putting a really cool mean looking front on it, but then you put on the car and the back of the car looks like an old Triumph and the front looks like, you know, a wannabe muscle car. And because I've got a chrome bumper on the back of the car, it makes sense to put a chrome trim on the bumper on the front. At least then it looks like I'm trying to have some kind of continuity front to back, you know what I mean. So the bumper is gonna have a nice chrome strip, strip along it. And then the um, front, splitter if you like the front balance the last part is going to have a recessed section in the middle for the number plate i'll take a sink that back into the valance so the number plate isn't going to sort of sit on the outside it will look like it's actually molded in and that front valance will be white it'll be color coded to the bonnet so this is all going to be white you're going to have a little black mesh grill in there the main grill in there with the lights is going to be black with the vertical teeth in it and the lights on the sides two pairs of angel eye lights on the sides the bumper will then be black with a chrome strip and the front thing will be white. And that should make the whole thing, you know, hopefully it will look all right. I don't know. As you can tell, I'm making up as I go along. I don't know. But I think for where we are at the moment, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you always have a picture in your head of these things when you're doing a project. Some people like to draw them, write them down, design them 3D in CAD, um, work off measurements. I don't. I like to just stick things on, stand back, have a look, see how it looks, and then go in, chop a bit more out, make it smaller, make it bigger. The whole thing's done by eye. Um, and I'm getting pretty good at doing stuff by eye, I'll be honest. When I measured this from that corner to the end of the bumper, before I put the glass on it, and keep in mind, I haven't measured up until this point. I've just done it by eye, sawing. I was eight mil out, one side to the other. The far side was eight mil longer than this side. Eight mil over two meters, I think it's pretty good, right? So the old eyeballs can't be that bad. Um, before I glassed it, I did measure it. I trimmed the eight mil off and then glassed over it. I'm not gonna intentionally put the eight mil error in because that'd be stupid. But um, yeah, that's probably a better tolerance than you get on factory Triumph bonnets straight from the factory because they were made by men in flat caps in Birmingham. Um, and they were notorious for not being the, uh, the best aligning panels in the world. Some of the panel gaps you can put your finger into. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, British engineering at its finest. But anyway, I think we're um, I think we're pretty good, to be honest. Like I say, in terms of the overall shape, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. As I've said before, there's still a bit of remedial work to do. It's a bit thick here. It's a bit thin here. That'll all be taken out with filler afterwards, grind it all back. It will all be nice and smooth. There's a few other bits I need to do. There's a low spot here I can see. There's a slight high here. This has got a slight curve to it. That will need to be flattened down. You know, lots of things like that. But um, again, that will all be done in filler because it's a lot easier to work with filler, something you can um, catalyze, 
put it on nice and quick. There's a reason people block out cars before paint using filler, right? You can just spread it on, DA it back, get it nice and flat, and it will show you how straight your panel is. And ultimately, once you put your primer on it, that's when you can really sit back, get a good look at it, and see how the thing looks. Um, yeah. So that's it. I think that'll probably do us as far as part two goes. Um, I'm pretty happy up until this point. So like I say, next job, work on the uh, the bumper, the splitter, etc. And then once we've got a big fiberglass thing and there's no foam on it anymore, it is glass, then the hard work really begins. Because that is going to be lots of sanding, lots of filling and endless, endless sanding and filling. I know that, I've done this enough with other things to know my future holds a lot of dust. But until that point, thanks for following along. As always, I do appreciate it. Any um, comments or criticisms, stick them down below. I'm cool with that. You wanna say it looks like shit? No problem, I'm absolutely cool with that. Um, but positive vibes are always welcome. We always appreciate that. Nice to know people are looking at our work. So, until that time, see you all soon.